Hello everyone. Much earlier today, um, Ray Comfortless dropped by my channel and uh, commented under uh, Sister Kathy Henderson's comment, and I believe it was on the uh, Ray Comfortless and the Dead Waters Gospel. And uh, instead of addressing me um, on the channel, instead he directs it towards Sister Kathy. And I sort of take it to mean that she's uh, been out there spreading the truth about how false his gospel is and some others. So he took it upon himself to address her. And um, I'm going to read what Ray Comfortless said here, and then um, I'm going to deal with it with the rest of the video. And... I'll probably just post a link of this video in response to him uh, rather than write out some big long comment but he's more likely to see that I followed up with a video so here we go Ray this is what you said you're saying the sinners have to believe to be saved they have to do something that's works righteousness um, That's another gospel. We are saved by grace alone. Ephesians 2, verses 8 and 9. Do you see the contradiction right off the bat? Um, believing is not works, okay? Believing is trusting upon Christ. And I, I wrote all this stuff down. But right away, he contradicts himself, okay? Um, to believe the gospel is to trust what Christ did, his finished work, okay, his death, his burial, his resurrection, to put our trust in the person of Christ. But now he's twisting it all around, and very subtly, what he's teaching here is um, Calvinism, because Calvinism says that God's going to save whoever he wants, um, and it has nothing to do with them believing upon him. Um, he's just going to shed his grace upon whoever he will and save them. Um, and the rest are going to get cast into hell. Now, Ray Comfort is a very self-righteous, hypocritical Pharisee. Um, for all intents and purposes, he's teaching sinless perfection. Apparently, Ray Comfort never sins. Apparently, Ray Comfort has already reached perfection on this earth. And there are a few teachers like that. Um, but the Bible is very clear that there is the new person in Christ, the inward man that is reborn, that is born at salvation, and then we still deal with the flesh, the fleshly mind. Okay? So... Ray apparently doesn't get that. Next he says, repentance is turning from sins. No, that's not what the Bible says. Repentance is a change of mind. Okay. Ezekiel, now he's going to quote some scriptures. And um, apparently, at least for some of this, he is using uh, the King James Bible. So here's the scriptures that he's quoting. Ezekiel 18 uh, verse 21 through 23, but if the wicked will turn from all his sins, he hath committed. Acts 3.29, repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. Note this is sins, not the sin of unbelief. <clears throat> Acts uh, 3.26, unto, no, yes, Acts 3.26, Unto you first God, having raised up his son Jesus, sent him to bless you in turning away every one of you from his iniquities. Note iniquities is plural, not the singular sin of unbelief. Per now here's what he says to Kathy. Okay, dear sister Kathy. He says, perhaps you need to repent of the sin of public lies and deception you've been spreading. Then he says, kind regards, Ray Comfort. Well, after accusing somebody of spreading lies and deception to say kind regards, it's like putting lipstick on a pig. It has no value whatsoever. It's a complete waste of time because you're being two-faced. That's very hypocritical. And um, 
in essence you're just being sarcastic. So no value there in saying kind regards because obviously he doesn't really mean it whenever he says that uh, somebody's spreading lies and deceptions. And the video has had quite a number of views. I don't know, more than a thousand. I have not kept up with it. But uh, we're going to respond um, to Ray Comfortless. And here was Sister Kathy's um, comment that she made. And this was two years ago. Amen, brother. The work of God is to believe. John 6, 28, 29, KJV. So many people still attack me and try and tell me that they have to repent of their sins in order to be saved. It's just so disheartening. I think she meant to say disheartening instead of heartening. When I give them this scripture and yet they still won't have it. But then again, the Bible has told us that many will perish. And that is very true, sister. Um... Now, sinners have to believe to be saved, okay? It's very simple. Uh, believe upon Christ, which means to trust Him. It's in Ephesians chapter 1, uh, verse 13. We'll look at that. Ephesians chapter 1. Okay, what's going to happen is when a person trusts Christ, they believe upon him. Because why would you believe on someone you don't trust? All right, that's very obvious. If you don't trust someone, why would you believe what they say? Why would you believe their words? So that's why belief and trust are irrevocably interwoven together. There's no separating the two. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13. In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Now, this is very important. I cannot emphasize this enough. You believe upon Christ. You've trusted in Him. You were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. No man can break that seal. Once you are saved, you're always saved. And here's the problem with people like Ray Comfort. They teach that first, in order to get saved, you have to repent of all of your sins. Okay? You got to bring them all to mind, repent of all of the sin. All of them. Then, um... And, of course, be sorry about them and cry over them for a while and show God that you really mean it. Then after that, you have to have a changed life. That is, you have to show everybody now that you're this uh, new, wonderful person that doesn't sin. Okay? And I'd seen this video. It was on this channel called Exposing the Wolves. And it was where he meets up with this drunk guy. And the drunk guy is telling him, yeah, I know, I've had some beers, I've been drinking, but I know I'm saved, I know I'm going to heaven. Uh, because what happens is um, that man judges the outward appearance, but God looks upon the heart, so he knows the heart of the person, okay? But Ray Comfort, he doesn't measure up to Ray Comfort's standards, so therefore that man must be going to hell because he doesn't measure up. But that man knew Christ, he knows he's going to heaven, he knew that at the time he was living after the flesh, but he still knew who he was in Christ. He knew who he was, that he was saved, born again. He had accepted Christ at an early age, and uh, he had the assurance of salvation, and Ray Comfort was not going to come along and mess with that because he knew what he knew, and he's in Christ. <clears throat> now, it is not our works to believe in Christ's finished works. Trusting and believing is just that, trusting and believing. Okay? That's the whole point. The whole point of Christ coming to die on the cross to pay for our sins, to pay the penalty for all of the sin of the whole world, not ours only, but for the sins of the whole world, so that all who will believe upon him can be saved. You see, Ray Comfort and those ilk like him they hate that word believe, okay? 
What does Jesus say? Except you believe, you shall likewise perish. Except you repent, you shall likewise perish. And he goes and perverts the word repent, okay, and changes it to mean something that it is not. God repented in Holy Scripture, okay? Um, if repentance meant to turn from sin, then now he's misdefined it because God did not turn from sin when he repented in Holy Scripture. He did not turn from sin because God is not a sinner. So, Ray teaches a works-based salvation contrary to Romans 4, verses 1 through 5. Romans 4. What shall we say then that Abraham our father as pertaining to the flesh hath found? So see, we're children of Abraham because Abraham is the father of the faithful. I have a video about that. For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof to glory, but not before God. You see, if you clean yourself up for people like Ray Comfort, then they're going to use that and say, aha, see there, yeah, he's a great guy. I mean, he's going to heaven. Look how perfect and clean he is. This is nothing but a bunch of Pharisees patting each other on the back, friends. That's all that is. For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God. He believed his word. God said, this is what's going to happen. This is what I'm going to do. Um, God spoke to him. Abraham believed God. And it was counted unto him for righteousness. Therefore, he's justified before God apart from the deeds of the law. But apart from the works of the law, he's justified before God. Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. So man is saved by faith alone in Christ's finished work. It's really that simple. Now I know Ray has twisted it, but in his twisted mind, um, he actually thinks he's going to heaven, but he's going to be among the Matthew 7, verses 21 through 23 crowd. I'm telling you folks, listen to me. When Ray Comfortless stands before God on Judgment Day, he's going to be absolutely shocked, surprised. He thinks he's going to waltz right into heaven and uh, get to sit right next to Christ and just have a grand old time, and nothing could be farther from the truth. Because what he's peddling is lies. And he is in for a very rude awakening. So by teaching that a person must show a changed life to others, you teach contrary to Holy Scripture and violate the very Scripture you use, which is Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. For by grace are you saved through faith. See, faith in Christ. We're saved by faith in Christ, his finished work. The person of Christ, what he did for us, paid for our sins on the cross. And by believing upon him, putting our trust in him, we are now born again, sealed by the Holy Spirit of promise. So the two mistakes he makes, the two grave errors, which gives him a false gospel that he's spouting, um, from his heretical mouth is he says that we must repent of our sins to be saved and afterwards show a changed life. Otherwise, we were never saved to start with because that's the proof. Ah, I can look at your life, tear you down. See, that's cults, my friend. That's how cults get started because now people like him, people like Brian Denlinger, and Brian Denlinger is no different. You have people like them that have the people that follow after them. They're not following after Jesus because Jesus said, my sheep know my voice and are known of me. They follow me and another shepherd they will not follow. So you have people like Ray Comfort keeping people in bondage to him, to his false gospel, so he can lord it over them. That's lordship salvation, okay? This is exactly the thing that Jesus hates. And whenever he was speaking to his 
disciples. He said, don't be like the Gentiles who exercise lordship over the people. He says, do not be like them. And I've done a video about who are the Nicolaitans and how that ties in with that. You can see that video. <laughs> not of works, lest any man should boast. Listen, if I could show up in heaven, say, I kept the law, I did all this, I obeyed you after salvation, I didn't mess up, I had a changed life, um, completely error-free, well, I'd have plenty of reason to boast. But I have no reason to boast. None. At all. Christ did it all. I've trusted in Him. He paid the price. He did it all. And I'm trusting His finished work. Nothing of my own. Because my works are filthy rags. That's it. Okay? My works are filthy rags. Christ's finished work is acceptable to the Father. And I discuss all of that in the video series, um, um, Atonement, Propitiation, Reconciliation. Now, if you want to see the clearest example of repentance is in Scripture, how it's a change of mind. To me, you may have a verse that shows it clearly to you, and that's fine. There's more than one. But I'm going to share this one with you in Matthew chapter 21. Matthew chapter 21. And let's look in verse 28. But what think ye? A certain man had two sons, and he came to the first and said, Son, go, to, go work today in my vineyard. He answered and said, I will not. But afterward he repented and went. So what happened? He changed his mind. He wasn't going to go. He changed his mind and he went. And this, he came to the second and said, Likewise. And he said, he answered and said, I go, sir, and went not. Whither of them twain did the will of his father? They say unto him, the first. Jesus saith unto them, Verily I say unto you, that the publicans and the harlots go into the kingdom of God before you. Before you, Ray Comfort, before you, you self-righteous, hypocritical Pharisee, the publicans and the harlots will be in heaven before you. And that drunk man that you tried to corner him and put him down and make him think he was lower than the lowest snake, he's going to be in heaven before you. He has a testimony of Christ. You do not have one. You have a false Christ. You have a false Jesus that is not real, that is not true. You have a made-up Jesus. And you will see that, that the harlots... And the publicans will go into heaven before you do, and you will be out of the kingdom of God, not in it. Jesus continued and said, For John came unto you in the way of righteousness, and ye believed him not. But the publicans and the harlots believed him. See there, Ray? That completely goes contrary to what you just said earlier. Okay? That believing is another gospel, not the true gospel. Oh, you can't just believe. And that's the same thing that that, that idiot Brian Denlinger does. Oh, you can't just believe. Oh, believe, believe, believe. And that's what they say, these lordship salvationists, um, over and over again. Or as some in the grace community calls them, lordship damnationists. Which that's a very accurate description. But... Uh, John came unto you in the way of righteousness, and ye believed him not, but the publicans and the harlots believed him, and ye, when ye had seen it, repented not afterward that ye might believe him. You didn't change your mind to believe afterward. Okay? They had more history to go with here. The, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, the same bunch that Ray Comfort is, that Brian Denlinger is, um, that all these other false teachers are, that want to uh, lord it over God's people and strut around like there's something big when they are nothing. They are less than nothing because they're going to be cast out. They're not going to be allowed to go into the kingdom of God.
They will have no part of it, but they will have their part in the lake of fire. But what did the publicans and the harlots do? They believed him. But the Pharisees, the Sadducees, when they had seen it, they repented not afterward and did not believe him. And they even had more time because after John comes Jesus and Jesus preaches the kingdom and tells them and, and, and they see the miracles. Okay? So, they still reject him. They didn't want any part of him. But they're hypocritical. They're self-righteous, you know, for a pretense they make long prayers. Um, they sit in the best places. Uh, they think that they're so much better than everyone else. Uh, they're not humble. They're very arrogant and pri prideful. So, repentance is not turning from sin, but a change of mind. So God repented, changed his mind, but he did not turn from sin. Your definition of repentance proceeds from your wicked, self-righteous heart. You are like unto the Pharisees of Jesus' day. You quote Acts 3.26, not even realizing that it's God who does the work. Look at Acts 3.26. Acts 3.26. Unto you first God, having raised up his son Jesus, sent him to bless you, and turning away every one of you from his iniquities. Who did it? Christ. Who gets all the glory? Christ. But in Ray's little world, who gets all the glory and the credit? Ray. Ray comfortless. And he's going to find that he's spending a long time in eternity without any comfort whatsoever. Now, regarding Ezekiel 18... Oh, let's cover Ezekiel 18. I think I covered this in a video a long time ago. I don't know if it's up, but let's just look at this briefly. Ezekiel chapter 18. Ezekiel chapter 18. Um, let's see here. 21 through 23. But if the wicked will turn from all his sins that he hath committed and keep all my statutes and do that which is lawful and right, he shall surely live. He shall not die. All his transgressions that he hath committed, they shall not be mentioned unto him in his righteousness that he hath done, he shall live. Have I any pleasure at all that the wicked should die, saith the Lord God? and not that he should return from his ways and live. We are dealing with the Old Covenant. We are dealing with the covenant that God made with the children of Israel, the law. And it must be understood that keeping the law brings physical benefits. For example, honor thy father, father and mother that thy days may be long upon in the land that the Lord thy God giveth thee. Okay? So, obeying the law can give you a physical benefit of living longer, okay? For example, if you decide, well, I'm not going to go obey, I'm, I'm, I'm going to obey the law and not go drink and drive. Uh, folks, I've seen the aftermath of car wrecks when people have gotten behind the wheel and um, have had too much alcohol and they wreck the car. They, they can kill themselves and others, usually others. <laughs> For some crazy reason, the drunk seems to walk away from it. But nonetheless, by obeying the law, there is a physical um, thing that's attached to it. Okay, But the law, keeping the law, cannot give you spiritual life. Because if there was a law that could give you spiritual life, Jesus would not have had to come and die and pay the price for man's sin. So, obeying in the Old Testament meant that the children of Israel were putting off the judgment of God so that he wasn't casting them out of the land or giving them to the sword and the famine, just like he said he would. He said, um, for doing the law, there's blessings and cursings. So, the, the purpose of the law was the schoolmaster that brings us to Christ, according to Galatians. It is a mirror that holds is held up in front of us to show that we are sinners. Okay, it's that simple. So, by recognizing that we are sinners, we need a Savior. 
Therefore, we turn to Christ. We believe upon him for salvation. We trust him and he saves us. For it's not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saves us. So it's all him. It's not us. We trust him. So there is a physical reward for keeping the law, a physical blessing under the old covenant of keeping the law. Keeping the law cannot save us, only trust in Christ. Um, look at Galatians 3. Galatians 3. And verses 21 through 25. Is the law then against the promises of God? God forbid. For if there had been a law given which could have given life, verily righteousness should have been by the law. But the scripture hath concluded all under sin that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. There you go, Ray, once again. That word that you hate. And you people despise the truth. You despise that word believe because whenever it comes right down to it, people can believe the true gospel, be saved, apart from anything that you do or present or any type of control that you can have over your parishioners, your little group, uh, your uh, people that you reach out to. You go out to the street and uh, spread your false gospel, just like uh, Todd Friel. Um, all these false teachers that stand out there and spread a false gospel, you can't exert any kind of control over them because Christ came to save sinners and he wants people to believe upon him. Remember the man that, that um, had a child that, that would injure himself? And Jesus said, I can do this if you believe. He said, Lord, I believe. Help thou my unbelief. Remember that? So then Christ does it because he believes. Okay? Who did the work? Christ. Christ does all the work. We trust him. We believe upon him. We don't have anything to offer him, folks. We don't. We believe upon him. We are trusting in him. We are sealed by that Holy Spirit of promise till the day of redemption, baptized into Christ through the Holy Spirit, and adopted joint heirs with Christ. What do we do to deserve that? Nothing. Nothing at all. There is absolutely nothing that we can do to deserve any of that. Nothing in my hand I bring, simply to thy cross I cling. But that's not Ray Comfort's way. No, no, he's going to have plenty. He can show God that he, he deserves to go to heaven because now he's a, um, he's a sinless perfectionist because he has arrived. Now, regarding the sin of unbelief, what you need to understand is every single person who rejects Christ, which are unbelievers will have their part in the lake of fire. This is what all the unrighteous have in common who go there. You know, there's going to be some people on this earth. Um, some might go to hell because they were murderers. Some might go to hell because they were rapists. Some go to hell uh, for uh, robbing and stealing. Some will go to hell for, for lying and cheating. But all of them are going to have one thing in common. They're all unbelievers. They have all rejected the free gift that God gives through his son to all of mankind. He offers them a free gift and they're all there because they did not believe. That is what's going to send people to hell. Jesus already paid for all the sin on the cross. He says so. He paid for all the sins of the whole world. Okay, John, 1 John. And he is the propitiation for our sins and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Okay, he already paid for all the sin. The sin is not, is not the issue here. He took care of the sin issue. Because the problem is unbelief. If you do not believe upon Christ, you have not put your trust in Christ, 
then you will spend eternity separate and apart from him, all of eternity in the lake of fire, because you did not believe. That is the issue. And that is what you do not understand, Ray Comfortless. So you teach a false way, Ray, an accursed gospel, failing to rightly divide the word of truth. And 2 Peter 2 speaks of your kind. 2 Peter 2. Look at verses 1 through 4. But there were false prophets also among the people, that's Old Testament, even as there shall be false teachers among you, that's this dispensation of the church age, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies. Now what's a damnable heresy? That is a heresy that will keep somebody from getting to heaven. Okay, that's a false Christ, a false gospel, which Paul deals with with the Corinthians even denying the Lord that bought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction. You know, all the souls of the earth are mine, God says. In Ezekiel, he says, all the souls of the earth are mine. Everything belongs to him, okay? And he paid for the sins of the whole world. But these false teachers that bring in these damnable heresies will find themselves cast out of the kingdom. They will not be allowed to enter. In fact, they will be cast into the lake of fire ultimately where they will be separated from God forever because they clung to their filthy, self-righteous works rather than trusting the beautiful, perfect, holy, finished work of Christ. And many shall follow their pernicious ways. Oh, there's plenty, folks. There is no shortage of false teachers and their followers. They're all over the place. Those who truly have just trusted Christ and believed upon Him are very few, very small. And even some that you think might be saved, that might be sharing the truth, that, um, that seem to have it right, a lot of times they don't even believe in the true Christ. They have, they have an incarnational sonship Christ, a false Christ that cannot save anyone. That's no different than the Christ of the Jehovah's Witnesses or the Mormons. Um, so, Many shall follow their pernicious ways, this destructive ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall evil be shall be evil spoken of. That's what Ray is doing. He's speaking evil of the truth by mocking the truth. Okay, by starting out his whole thing with his sarcasm. You are saying that sinners have to believe quotation marks to be saved. They have to do something. Uh, no, believing is not doing something. Believing is trusting in the finished work of Christ and what he did. That's works righteousness. That's another gospel. What a twisted, hypocritical thing to say from the mind of somebody who has no clue about having true peace with God. And through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you. They'll buy and sell you like a commodity on the stock market because you're not worth anything to them, okay? If, if that was the case, uh, he would have had a lot more respect for that fellow that had been drinking but still knew who Christ was because a person who really knew who Christ was would have the witness of the Holy Spirit in him and he would know that that's still a brother in Christ. He might be on the alcohol. He might have had a few beers to drink. Um, but it's still a brother. And um, therefore, you deal with your brother in Christ meekly um, and pointing him in the right direction, not putting him down, cutting him down, um, upbraiding him, but rather um, in meekness and the spirit of humbleness, you, you gently guide him and speak to him the way you should um, as an elder in the body of Christ, that's how you're supposed to be. And whenever a brother has fallen, you're to lift them up, okay? Ray Comfort did none of that. He had nothing to offer, nothing to offer that man. And from that perspective, that man had something to offer him, but Ray wasn't going to have it, okay? And through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. 
So, very simple. It may seem like oh, life just goes on and on, and the wicked aren't going to get their just desserts. The wicked aren't going to be punished. They're just going to keep going on and on, spouting their same evil lies. But there's a payday coming. And um, God, our blessed, eternal creator, he's got time. And he's going to bide his time and wait for that judgment. Okay? And all will be judged. And everything will be done according to his plan, um, in his time, in his way, whenever he sees fit. And Ray, this is a warning to you and the others like you. You need to believe the gospel and not twist scripture. Because um, there's a judgment coming and you're not going to be able to afford the payment of eternal separation from God and a lake of fire with which you will never get out of. So that's going to do it for this video. Until next time, God bless you all and take care.